Hi everybody, this is Hong with Cash Property Inc. And I am here with Morgan and we are going to address a big issue right now that is on a lot of real estate investors' minds. So Morgan, why don't I give you a couple seconds so you can introduce yourself and then we'll jump right into the topic of why I got you on, on the phone. <laughs> Absolutely, thank you so much, Hong. So happy to be here and provide as much information as I can. So my name's Morgan Byrne. I'm a real estate agent in Toronto, Ontario, and I'm also a Airbnb specialist. I'm a super host and I own my company VVS Property Investments, which predominantly specializes in Airbnb properties. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know what? It was really great getting a call from Hong because I know she has a lot of, um, you know, a lot of influence over a lot of investors. And, you know, if you're like me and a lot of other of my clients as well, you know, Airbnb is a big, big, big source of income, just how lucrative and how cash focused that it is. So, you know, unfortunately with the, the fear and everything like that going on in the world right now, you know, travel has really, really, really taken a major hit. Um, you know, it, Right now, Airbnb, they've been really good um, on the traveler's side. Mm -hmm. So basically, they have the extenuating circumstances policy, which means that um, no matter when the traveler booked it or, um, or no matter when their dates were, they're able to cancel it are sorry, able to cancel their reservation without any fees. Um, you know, the that good thing across is, the board, like with all countries, like all reservations across the board. Yeah, that's a company policy that they put into effect. So basically, they're able to cancel um, with no penalties, which is good, right? You know, I know if I was in that situation and I was traveling, you know, and even thinking about how many people can't even get home right now, um, the last thing that they would want is to have um, Airbnb fees on their mind. So I think that's really good that the company's doing that. Mm -hmm. So from an investor's point of view, what's out there to protect them? Because right? now they're losing tons of revenues. Absolutely. So, you know... Um, even with the canceled reservations, um, you know, even getting the staff to go in, you know, the cleaners and everything like that, it's really hard to get cleaning staff to go in right now at this point because, you know, everyone wants to do quarantine. I know in cities like San Francisco, they're doing just 24 hour quarantine. So that's everybody is just completely under quarantine. And, you know, depending on where it goes and depending on um, what our prime minister thinks, we might even roll into that as well. So I think right now it's best to get all the reservations taken care of now that you can. I know with our business, when we had some domestic reservations, so people from Toronto, um, people from Brantford in the area um, that wanted to stay, that was okay because they didn't have the travel limitations imposed on them um, when it came to crossing borders, because I know right now our, our borders are closed as well. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there is a bit of an opportunity. I know um, some people, they want to be in town for their uh, relatives or their older relatives or something like that to be caregivers because some, some of the caregivers, their programs have been cut as well. So instead of completely cutting it off, um, we've opened up some of our units um, and had them at discounted rates just so that we can do our part. And, uh, you know, first of all, we're trying to recoup costs, but at the same time, you know, if we can help a family reconnect or, or help someone take care of their family members, then that's really great as well okay. uh, but you know right now we got to you know put it at zero put our expectations really at zero which is very difficult just because it's so unknown we don't know exactly when we're gonna go get back into having travelers I think travel will really be one of the last things that recovers in terms of, uh, of this situation you know one of the last industries that recovers because I think even if the um, the bans and the limitations are removed mm -hmm. that people will still feel a little bit hesitant Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, okay, so I, I guess from the uh, investor side, in terms of making your units more friendlier around the whole virus thing, what suggestions do you have there for somebody who, who can get their units a little bit more friendlier? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I guess maybe, you know, listing what kind of products that you use to do the cleaning would be great. You know, we use all Lysol products. Um, you know, we disinfect everything, make sure that our units are really, really clean. So that might put some people's mind at ease. Um, I would also list what types of precautions you're taking and what types of supplies that you have in your units. You know, so say, you know, we have um, lots of toilet paper, um, you know, we have hand sanitizer, we have everything available in each room so that we um, keep contamination as low as 
possible. Okay. Um, but you know, I, I, I think a lot of Airbnbs, the best thing is that we have cleaning staff and they're, they're very clean. So, you know, an Airbnb is not really the worst place to be if we're going to be in something like this, um, especially for solo travel. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, those are the two things that I would suggest for sure. Definitely listing what type of precautions you're taking as a host, because mm -hmm. sometimes that'll put people's mind at ease if people say, okay, you know, this is someone that's fearful as well, but they're still trying to provide the best, um, best experience possible for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm wondering how many uh, Airbnb owners are providing masks as an intent of saying, hey, if you stay in our unit, we'll give you a free mask per person that's going to stay. That's not a bad idea. You know what? You don't want to like take advantage of the situation too much, but hey, you know, if you can differentiate yourself from another unit in some way and say, yeah, you know what? Um, we're going all out. We're providing masks. That's actually a really great idea, Hong. <laughs> if you can get your hands on some, which is really difficult right now. Okay. Does Airbnb allow you to put a video so that if you're um, a, 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 like a super host, you can put a video showing you cleaning the unit and using different products? Well, they don't have video capabilities at this time, but you know, even if you, if you wanted to be really um, proactive, and especially if you have multiple listings, if you, you know, just bought a site off of Wix or something, and if you, um, you know, then you can upload videos, then you can upload what precautions you're taking. And you know, it's actually not a bad marketing tool to have um, later as well, you know, having a site that promotes yourself and your unit. And you can definitely add your uh, URL to your listing. So that's a way you know, something that you're investing in now that will actually give you revenue after as well by looking, you know, very proactive and very professional. Yeah, that's, that's the thing. You know, we just want to take advantage of everything that we can, right? As hosts and small business owners. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's a great tip because a lot of owners, I think, might be sitting there going, "Okay, well, I can't rent on my unit, so I'm just going to sit here and you know, in the gloom and doom state, right?" But really, you could use this time to build those websites, to build your marketing plans, so that when we all get out of this, that you can get back on the market a lot faster and better. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's not going to last forever. So, you know, now's a really great time to um, be reflective, you know, go over um, how did my business do over the last year? What could I do better? Um, maybe, you know, check out other listings, see what other hosts are doing. Really make spying. your listing as competitive as possible. Yeah. You know, do a little bit of spying, make your listing as competitive as possible so that um, when you guys do get back in business, you're going to come back stronger and better than ever. And that's, you know, the best that we can do right now. Mm. So, so, you know, I, I, so another idea that just came to me is that there are going to be a lot of Airbnb uh, hosts that were maybe just doing one or two units that are going to drop off. Yeah, okay. they can't afford it. They're going to just liquidate, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, if you hang in there, you're right. There is definitely an opportunity, um, you know, to come Go back. Scoop those ones up and add them to your portfolio, right? So then you're not just doing, you know, a handful as a super host, but now you can grow your Airbnb portfolio. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't have less competition. That's always great. So uh, that's a really good idea, Hung, for sure. Okay. Yeah. I but just, you know, we're all sitting at home, might as well, you know, in, in all aspects of our life, really, we can um, reevaluate, see what we're doing, and then just come back stronger. If yeah. Now, I did have another question, though, Morgan. So if somebody's sitting there and they're struggling with this Airbnb, is now a good time to be thinking about converting a strat like the Airbnb strategy, or is it really to say, okay, just hold tight, this will blow over, this will pass, and then you just get back on Airbnb? Or is this maybe a good time to really think about a different strategy? You know what? I guess evaluating is always good. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, no, I think it's definitely good to reevaluate your strategy and see kind of what would work best for you. Um, it really depends. Sometimes you think, you know what? I had a great year before and I've been doing really strong. It's really good cash flow. So I'm going to stick it out and stay with it. Other times you might say, you know what? Um, I don't know about the world. I don't know what's going to go on. Um, you know, I'm just too risk averse. So maybe just getting a long-term tenant in there or maybe doing something for uh, a little little bit longer of periods as opposed to you know daily or weekly might work a little bit better for me so I think yeah you know reevaluating is definitely good um, as often as you can I like I like to try and reevaluate our our um, our objectives every quarter really just to see what we did what we did wrong what we can fix and um, you know and and I've had definitely clients before they've taken it on for a couple months and they've said you know what this is just not the strategy for me it's too much work too much invested and they they want to liquidate okay 
Okay. All yeah. Right. Well, it's definitely not for everybody, but yeah, I think, and, and especially you as, as an investor yourself, Hong, I know that you probably have uh, changed up your strategy sometimes yeah. before. Too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so that can happen. You know what? Yeah. You might be one of the uh, Airbnb hosts that decides, you know what? I'm, I'm just not, um, I'm not feeling this strategy anymore. And that's perfectly okay. Right. There's definitely an investing strategy out there for everybody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But now on this call so far, we, we've actually given about three or four different ideas and tips to continue that, right? Because yeah. this, this is going to blow over. Okay.